Some historians are concerned New Zealand's public libraries and museums are being priced out of buying national taonga by private investors snapping up items from the country's early history. Public institutions have always come up against private collectors at auction houses, but a recent loss has called into question the depth of the public purse. Although some national treasures can't be taken out of the country, it could be decades before an item resurfaces into the public domain. Amy Williams reports. A quiet Auckland suburb may not seem like an obvious home for a collection of rare treasures from New Zealand's early history, but in one house they're part of the furniture. Private collector Spencer Schooler keeps carefully preserved books and documents dating back to the early 1800s in his home and lends others to museums. Kind of got an academic background, so as part of that I read a lot of books all the time anyway. So I've got an interest in books, I've got an interest in New Zealand, bring those two together. There was a great opportunity 10 years ago to get involved when there's some very rare books available and I took the plunge and uh, have not looked back. Dr Schooler recently outbid a number of the country's libraries for a prized copy of a corrected printing of a Treaty of Waitangi Proclamation of Sovereignty and handwritten letter for $31,000. He bought them when hundreds of rare documents and books from the Christopher Parr collection went under the hammer in June. That particular item I thought I didn't have a chance on. I thought I might have a chance on some earlier ones which I missed. Um, and it's just because I missed all the others that this was the, the last one available. So I gave it my best shot, it was my highest bid I was going to make, and just by chance um, I ended up with it. Dr Schooler has been collecting for a decade and considers himself a custodian. In my particular case, I'm very happy with extremely rare items to, rather than have them displayed in my own home, to um, lend them to a museum, uh, provided they're going to display them. You know, I'm not, I'm not willing to lend them if they're just going to store them because then I might as well have them at home and, and see them myself. But if they're willing to display them, then I'm very, very happy to lend them to them. The auction house Art and Object sold the entire Christopher Parr collection for just over half a million dollars. The extensive collection was described as a mouth-watering part of the country's bibliohistory and the auction flushed out 10 institutions keen on acquiring Taonga. But institutions bought just 75 of the 300 items, the rest went to private buyers. An independent specialist in New Zealand's print history, Dr Phil Parkinson, says the original handwritten letter is a missing link in the Alexander Turnbull Library. The collection of rare documents is a division of the National Library of New Zealand, which are housed in Wellington. There's relatively little, apart from occasional stray documents, which have remained in private collections. Um, the one which we missed out on, on the uh, one thing which uh, caused a, a bit of flurry the other day, is one of the proclamations. It's not actually quite what the purchaser thought it was, but it had with it a manuscript letter by Shortland. Uh, that is the thing which we had been particularly trying to acquire for the Turnbull. As a former librarian at Alexander Turnbull Library, Dr Parkinson says he's disappointed the institution did not acquire the handwritten letter. You need to have uh, all the evidence available if you, if you are missing vital pieces of evidence, uh, then the story can never be completed. Dr Parkinson says the Alexander Turnbull Library could try to secure the letter in the future. Private collectors can drive prices up, as, as we saw for, for the recent auction, where um, the price was dri driven up to over $30,000, and at that stage the library was no longer able to complete. Uh, with the private purchaser. In a statement, its chief librarian, Chris CK, said it's not unusual for public institutions to be outbid by private bidders of significant means. Dr ZK said public institutions believe that there's value in certain items being in public ownership so they can be accessible to New Zealanders. When he's at auctions, private collector Dr Schooler does not see his bids as competing against the public purse. I don't see it as competing ever against institutions or not institutions. Um, I, I, other than one or two, I actually don't know which people in the auction room are and which aren't, to be honest. Um, it's just um, you're performing your own view of value and what you're looking for and, and making decisions as you go through the auction. 
Auckland War Memorial Museum was among 10 institutions bidding on items at the Christopher Parr Collection auction. The museum's Director of Collections and Research, David Reeves, says they won four of the 13 lots they bid on at the auction. Each organisation has its own, its own history and its own strengths and over time we've got to know each other better and better and we take care not to overlap too much um, and because ultimately these things are all cared for by, by public organisations and there's only so much money to go around. So it's, it's um, responsible for us to make sure that we are in touch with each other and um, are collecting in complementary areas without too much duplication. Dr Reeves is philosophical about auction wins and losses. Professionally it's, it's, it's sometimes disappointing, but also um, it's, it's a reality that, that the, the landscape is, is a mixture of public and private collectors and uh, sometimes the cookie crumbles a different way. That's uh, just how it goes. He says auctions make up a small portion of acquisitions and public institutions sometimes work with private collectors to help them acquire national treasures. There are opportunities to work with private collectors. So we do, when we mount exhibitions, we often um, do borrow from private collections or, or indeed other public collections. So I think the fact that something is purchased by a private collector doesn't necessarily mean that it disappears for good. Um, of course, you know, the, the, the uh, professional uh, interests of, of curators are that, that they, they work here because they enjoy sharing collections with the public and so their hope is to be able to bring those, those collections to light. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes it provides an opportunity to work jointly with, with private collectors and we have had a number of instances where working before the auction we've been able to um, sort of stitch up a deal where, where we got joint uh, have a joint bid for an item where uh, a philanthropically minded private collector wants to work with the museum and we put in some of the funding each and, and have been successful. Even so, Dr Reeves says public institutions could always do with more funding for their collections. If a treasure of national significance needs to be brought back to New Zealand ownership, the government has the power to requisition items under the Protected Objects Act. It has done this only twice in recent times, neither with the documents. And although the Act requires objects of national significance to be registered against their owners, the list of these collectors and what they own is confidential. Private collectors can fly under the public's radar, as can treasures of national significance. For Checkpoint, this is Amy Williams.